What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Fallout London in a mod manager. We're also going to be using different profiles. You can use both your default mod profile as well as a Fallout London profile. We're also going to be downgrading the game in the way that the Fallout London developers recommend from their site. We are not using the downgrade program as I personally do not like putting my Steam credentials and anything but Steam. I would rather do it the manual way and this is actually pretty easy. I'll step you guys through the process. It's not too hard. And I will add chapters in the video. So if you've already done the downgrade process, you can jump ahead to the section that you need to go to in this tutorial. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna open the run window and type in this command so that we can get to the Steam console. So here we are in the Steam console, and there's a list of 15 different commands that we're going to have to copy and paste. And the reason there's more of them than my last downgrade tutorial is because they recommend downloading every single DLC, and every single DLC is going to be required for the Fallout London mod. I'm going to put all these links in the description, and you just have to copy and paste them one at a time. Now these can take a while to download because it's essentially downloading the whole game. And you also want to make sure you have enough space. I would leave at least 100 gigs if you have it because it's going to download all the files, including the high resolution texture packs that they recommend downloading as well from their site. And once they're downloaded, you will get a notification in the console that says download, depot download complete. And you want to make sure that you have 15 of them. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to navigate to this folder structure here. We're gonna use a control C, and then I'm gonna to go to my Explorer, go to the top bar, and I'm gonna hit control V. That's just the copy and paste command. So you can easily get to where the files have downloaded to. So here back in Steam, I'm gonna to go to the cog wheel, manage, and then browse local files. This is going to bring up the installation folder of Fallout in the Steam directory. Now what I'm going to do is a little different. Instead of copying and pasting over the files, I'm going to take this folder and I'm just going to name it Next Gen Update. You could also name it Backup. But I would recommend making a new folder as this is what they recommend on their website. And we're just going to do a fresh installation. So in every single one of these folders, there's going to be data that we need to copy over from each depot file. So we're going to do that here. I'm just going to move them. You can also copy them, but I'm going to move them. And we have 15 of them. We have to just move over. So it's a little tedious, but once you're done, you have essentially rebuilt the entire game in the downgraded version of 1.10163. And if it asks you to replace files in the destination, just hit replace files and, and do this with every single folder. And once you're done, we will have a fresh copy of Fallout 4. And what I like to do is I like to highlight all the folders. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to check to see it says zero bytes here. So I know that I've copied all the files. I'm just going to delete them. Now we're going to navigate to this website here, f4se.silverlock.org, and we're going to download the Fallout 4 script extender for 1.10.163. So once that's downloaded, we're going to open up the window. I'm going to put it in split screen. And we're gonna drag and drop all of these files to the root directory of our Fallout installation that we just built with the downgraded files. And make sure to copy and replace if it asks you. So now we've got our Fallout script extender. So there's the f4se loader.exe. I'm gonna load this up and check to make sure the downgrade was successful. And as you can see here, it has the script extender in the settings with 1.10163, which is the version that we need for Fallout London. 
So I'm going to quit. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable updates. I'm going to go browse local files again. And from this directory, I'm going to go back a couple folders to Steam apps. And we're looking for this file, app manifest underscore 377160. I'm going to right click on it, go to properties and hit read only. So just make sure that's checked and hit OK. So now updates are disabled. So the next thing we want to do is we want to navigate to GOG.com and go find the Fallout London mod. It's free and add it to our library. Make sure you're signed in when you do so. And then we're going to go download the GOG Galaxy 2.0 app for your computer. So I already have that installed here. And once that's installed, we can go launch it. And if you go to your cart in the app, you can add this game to your owned games. So right now it's not installed. I'm going to go to my owned games. You can see it's right there, Fallout London. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And we're going to hit install. Want to install it. I'm going to install it to this directory here. That's the default games directory for GOG games. And once it's installed, we do not want to hit the play button because we are installing this mod manually into a mod manager. If you would like to just run the game without other profiles, you can hit play and have it patch it for you. We're going to be doing some different steps in order to get this into a mod manager so we can run two instances of this game. So now that it's downloaded, we're going to navigate to that folder that it's installed in. Program Files, GOG Galaxy, and then it's under Games, and there's Fallout London. What we're going to need to do is zip the data folder. You can zip this in Windows, but it's going to take a little while longer. I prefer to use 7-zip. It's going to be much faster to use 7-zip program. I already have it up here, so I'm going to right-click on that data folder and then go down to data.zip. Do not hit data.7-zip or 7z. We want to go with the zip version. And this could take a little while. My computer, it is a newer computer, but it took about 10 minutes or so. So once that's done, it'll add the file here. I'm going to rename it to Fallout London, just to keep things simple. And you can keep it in this directory or you can move it. I'm going to move it to where I keep my other mods on my computer. And I have just have a mods folder on the root of my C drive. And I'm going to put it in here with my Fallout mods. Now we're going to launch Vortex Manager. And I'm not going to do a full rundown of Vortex. If you guys would like me to do another follow-up video on how to set this up, I can do that. But in your settings here, we want to make sure that we have this box checked, the Enable Profile Management toggle. Because we're going to be making multiple profiles so that we can run a default with our standard mods, and then we're also going to be running another profile for Fallout London. So I'm going to add a new profile here. I'm going to call it Fallout London. And I want to check those two toggles down below. This profile has its own save files, and this profile has its own game settings. And the next thing we want to do is enable this. So we're going to enable the Fallout London profile. Don't worry if there's any errors. So we're going to go to the Mods tab here. I'm going to put this in split screen where I put that Fallout London zip data folder. I'm going to drag it into that area where it says drop files. This is going to manually import the mod into our mod manager. And this is very similar. If you have mod organizer three, it's a very similar process, just a little different for importing the mod, but you can do the same thing. You can install it manually. So you have to wait for it, extract, and then make sure you say enable all in that top right. 
And the next thing we want to do, we want to go back to our GOG Galaxy folder under underscore underscore config. And we want to copy these two INI files to documents, my games, Fallout 4, and paste them in here. So we want to try to launch it here. And it looks like so far so good. And there we go, Fallout London. And I would make sure to run a new game and just kind of run through the first steps just to make sure it loaded correctly. You'll know if it loaded right. I don't want to spoil anyone in the very beginning of the game. So back in Vortex here, I'm just gonna do a little test. I wanna run, I'm gonna enable my default mod profile. It's gonna take a little while, it's gonna to have to switch to profiles and re-enable all of your other mods. And then once it's done so, we can go to the mods tab. And right now all I have is true storms enabled. And I'm also gonna go and enable my texture pack down here, the X Vivid all-in-one 4K. And since we rebuilt the installation folder that it's pointed to, you will have to reinstall your mods, just FYI, if you have Vortex already installed and it's pointing to that directory because they're probably missing from the data folder. So I just reinstalled it, it didn't take too long. And I'm just gonna do a quick test here and launch the game. So far, so good. This is the correct loading screen for Fallout. I'm gonna load it in one of my older saves. And I can already tell that it worked because the textures on this tree are the X Vivid textures. I really do like that texture pack. Check out my other video. I've got a quick rundown on some visual mods for Fallout 4. And I'm gonna do one more test here. I'm gonna go to my inventory, go to miscellaneous, and there's true storms. This is how I can tell if my mods are working. I'm gonna do a quick test here to change the weather in my true storms. I'm gonna change it to clear. Exit out, and there we go. So now you can have two profiles. You can have Fallout London as well as your default mod profile within Vortex or Mod Organizer 3 if you use their profile settings. And now we don't have to mess with only having Fallout London on our computer. Or if you, you know, a lot of people recommend buying it twice from GOG. So you can have two different versions. We don't have to do that either. We can have the Steam version and then we can just use the exact same game files to run both profiles on our computer. So anyway, that'll do it for this video. If you guys have any questions about this process, let me know down below. Consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, have a wonderful day.